Phil Goldberg. I'm 66. I'm the author of American Veda, subtitled From Emerson and the Beatles to Yoga and Meditation, How Indian Spirituality Changed the West. I've been a professional writer for most of my adult life, and uh, this is the latest in my oeuvre. Phil, I mean, first of all, you look remarkable for 66. Um, I want to talk to you about spirituality after 50, because it's something we haven't talked about a lot on this site. What would you say, what part of, a lot of people are afraid of growing older. What part, and how does spirituality help in that, do you think? You know, most, a lot of people turn to spirituality as a sort of part of a midlife crisis. This is a classic sort of thing when you realize you have, you might have fewer years ahead of you than you had in the past, it's a classic thing. But there's, it's not the only time people do. I mean, I turned to spirituality when I was in my 20s, it's been a big part of my life, it's, it's been the, 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 the light motif of my life. But some people, it's sort of when they have the empty nest, when they have, they run through a difficult time in their lives and they, and they realize there must be something more because all the things they, they, they were striving for most of their adult life and succeeded at didn't give them the level of satisfaction that they hoped for or the inner peace that they hoped for. So they start to think, is there more to life? Is there more that I haven't been connected to? And so it, it be, it, for many people it is an over 50 thing, especially if they've had a successful life and their kids are grown and they're suddenly a, what's the next step? What's the purpose? And in India, of course, there's classically different stages of life and one turns to the study of spirituality after one has fulfilled one's uh, householder duties and parental duties and so forth. So there's precedent for that. And many people in the West just sort of find themselves slipping into, into that. And it's not necessarily a religious thing. It's often a spiritual thing. It's, it's how do I cultivate my inner life? How do I cultivate a, a relationship with uh, the rest of, the, of humanity and the rest of the cosmos? How do I live a more... Uh, contributory life, and and what is it all about? The, you know, those sort of questions start arising very often after 50. Do you think it's the closer that one may get to whatever spirit one believes? You know, that's why I've always heard about the Indians. It's like the, the last third of the life is kind of devoted to God because you're on your way to him, if you will. And you've done what, and now everything's changed now because our lifespans are so much longer. But traditionally, you've done your duty. You've raised your family, you've succeeded in, in feeding your children, and so on and so forth. And now, it's time to study the scriptures. And then there'll be another phase, classically, where you actually give up all of the worldly attachments and go off and become a renunciate, which obviously very few uh, Westerners do, but I suspect a lot of baby boomers will actually do some equivalent of that. Will we walk around naked with a bowl? <laughs> Not necessarily, but there may be, you know, upscale ashram type of retreats. <laughs> okay, let me ask you a question, because you and I have talked, and we're sort of in the same place spiritually, which is our own kind of spirituality. For pe Now, there are people out there who are, and I tend to stay away from a lot of spirituality, but there are people who have their own religions, organized religions, that they are very attached to. And I never ever want to get in the way of anyone's religion. For people who may be feeling a bit deprived spiritually, maybe not attached to an organized religion, at this stage in their life, can you give me three tips for feeling a little calmer a little closer to something, even if you don't know what something may be? A lot of people who have been part of a religious tradition, when they get a little older, they realize there's something 
going, there's something lacking in the inner dimension of inner peace and inner, inner contentment that the organized religion is not providing them. That's when they become real spiritual seekers. And they may do it within the tradition they, they've been part of, or they may look elsewhere. But what, they st what is available to them, either way, are methodologies. Now, I'm, I'm partial to the methodologies that have come to us from India because they tended to be very practical. So the methodology surrounding what we think of as yoga, meaning meditation, meaning the hatha yoga practices that you can find in any yoga studios, those, regardless of the uh, religious dimension, can be practiced uh, by anybody. So my first tip would be find a meditation practice that works for you and do it, do it regularly. Be discerning about the choice and be meticulous about doing it on a regular basis because those methodologies are designed for that very purpose, to, to give you that inner connection to the, the, the deepest and purest part of yourself. And I would, I would add to it to take good care of your body because one of the things the yogis knew and one of the things that made uh, yoga and all the Indian teachings so popular in the West is they understood the relationship between the physical and the, and the spirit and, and the mental. And so taking care of the body, doing practices like breathing and meditation and, and yoga, that to me is the critical thing. Books, learning, study, all that is, can be part of it, but the real cultivation of inner peace comes from the, the direct methodologies that you have to be willing to put a little time and effort into. And spend just a little day being quiet with yourself. And yes, and, and, and start to think about what's really important. You know, what really matters, what really gives you contentment, what really gives you sustenance. Well, that, those are great. And also pick up a copy of... American Veda. American Veda, which will maybe lead you into some of these directions. Phil, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, and namaste. Namaste.